In this tutorial, we're going to go over missing diagrams. So here's an example problem. The altitude to the base of an isosceles triangle bisects the vertex angle. So we need to prove it using a two column proof. But in this example, we're not given the diagram. In fact, we're missing uh, the diagram. So we got to draw ourselves. So let's start with an isosceles triangle. And let's call it triangle A, B, C. So let's write down the facts that we know. So we're given that triangle A, B, C is isosceles. Now we know that the altitude of this triangle bisects the vertex angle. We got to prove that. So we need a new point. We'll call this point D. So BD is given to us as an altitude. So BD is an altitude. Now, we want to prove that BD bisects the vertex angle. So we need to write this statement. Prove that ray BD bisects the vertex angle the vertex angle being angle B. So it has to bisect ABC. So now that we drew a diagram, wrote a given, and wrote what we need to prove, now we can do this with a two column proof. So let's begin. Statements. and reasons. So how should we begin? The first statement I'm going to make is that BD is an altitude. And we know that it's given. So what do we know about an altitude? What is an altitude? An altitude is a line that is perpendicular to the segment that it interacts with. So therefore, we know that BD is perpendicular to ADC. And perpendicular lines form right angles. So in step two, we could say that, let's separate the information on the left. from our two column proof. In step two, we're going to say that angle ADB and angle CDB are right angles. And the reason for that, that we can write, is that perpendicular lines form right angles. Now, what's our next step? Let's focus on our goal. In order to prove that BD bisects angle ABC, we need to show that these two angles are congruent. And we can do that if we can prove that these two triangles are congruent. So we're dealing with right triangles because angle ADB and angle CDB are right angles. Therefore, we may be able to prove that these two triangles are congruent using the HL postulate, the hypotenuse leg theorem. So what other facts do we know? Well, notice that triangle ABC is isosceles. So let's write that. So triangle ABC is isosceles, and that's simply a given statement. But what do we know about isosceles triangles? We know that the two sides of an isosceles triangle are the same. So we can write that. So we can say that segment AB 
is congruent to segment CB. Now, what can we write as a reason for this? We could say, if a triangle is isosceles, then the two sides are congruent. We could write a sentence like that. But I wish to conserve space, so I'm going to say definition of an isosceles triangle. Just to keep things simple, but if your teacher wants you to write a sentence, just say that an isosceles, the two sides of an isosceles triangle are congruent. And that should work. So now what else do we need in order to prove that the two triangles are congruent? So we got the right angles. We've shown that the hypotenuse is congruent. Now we need to show that one of the legs of the two right triangles are congruent. And notice that we do have a common side, BD. So BD is common to both triangles. So we can say that BD is congruent to BD based upon the reflexive property. So now we have enough information to prove that the two triangles are congruent. So we can say that triangle ABD is congruent to triangle CBD. Now what reason or what postulate can we use as a reason for that statement. So we know this is going to be the HL postulate, the hypotenuse like postulate. Now we need to write the statements that coincide with it. So we started with the right angle, and so that came from statement two. And then after that, we move to the hypotenuse, which is uh, statements. Four AB is congruent to uh, CB, and then the legs are congruent, so that's five. So it's two, four, and five. So now, what should we do next? So now that we've proven that the two triangles are the same, we can show that these two angles are congruent. So we could say that angle ABD is congruent to angle CBD. And we could say the reason for that is CPCTC. Corresponding parts of congruent triangles are congruent. And now we can make the last statement that ray BD bisects angle ABC. Since these two are congruent, BD bisects ABC. And the reason we could say is the definition of an angle bisector. So that's all you got to do for the missing diagram problem. You might get a sentence and you have to draw the diagram yourself. You have to come up with the statements that are given based on this information and you have to identify what you're trying to prove. Once you could do that, then it's a two-column proof problem. So hopefully, uh, this example gave you what you needed in order to do these types of problems. Go ahead and try this example. The median to the base of an isosceles triangle divides the triangle into two congruent triangles. So for the sake of practice, go ahead and work on it. So let's start with a triangle. Once again, we're going to call it triangle A, B, C. And there's a median, so we're going to draw a line. And we need to add another point, which we'll call point D. So let's write the facts that we know. So we know BD is a median. Now what else do we know? We know that triangle A, B, C is isosceles. Our task is to prove that the two triangles are congruent. That is that triangle ABD is congruent to triangle CBD. 
So let's go ahead and do this. So let's write our two column proof statements and reasons. So let's start with the first statement that triangle ABC is isosceles. And so that statement was given to us. Now let's move on to the next statement and let's separate these things. So if ABC is isosceles, then we know that AB has to be congruent to BC. And the reason for that is the two sides of an isosceles triangle are congruent. So let's write definition of an isosceles triangle. Let me separate the word of an isosceles. So what can we do now? Now we can move on to the next given. BD is a median. And so what do we know about a median? A median is basically a line that extends from the vertex of the triangle to the other side. And this other point, point D, is a midpoint. So the median is a line between the vertex of a triangle to the midpoint of the other side. So we could say that in number four, D is a midpoint. And the reason, definition of a median. So now that we know that D is a midpoint, what other conclusions can we draw from it? If D is the midpoint, that means that AD has to be congruent to DC. And the reason for this, we can use definition of a midpoint. Now, in statement six, we can use the fact that BD is common to both triangles. So BD is congruent to BD. And so that's going to be the reflexive property. So now we can move on to our final statement, statement seven, and say that triangle ABD is congruent to triangle CBD. And so it's the side, side, side postulate. And so we've used statements two, five, and six to come to that conclusion. And that's it. So with this section, the case of the missing diagrams, you need to read the sentence carefully, draw a picture from it, and identify what's given and what you have to prove. Once you can do that, then it becomes a simple two column proof problem, which you can do. So that's it for this video. Thanks for watching and feel free to check out my playlist if you want to find more geometry video tutorials. If this is the first time you're seeing this video or any of my geometry videos, you can look at my playlist and find any of the topics that you might have missed before. So once again, thanks for watching.